right, everyone. Welcome back to Yes, Alaska. Hey, Hello, guys. everybody. So, as you can see, we're baiting up for our first halibut trip of the year. Pretty excited. Beautiful day out. Yep. We're just heading out to Chiniac Ways for a day out. It's not exactly a trip, but a day out anyway. So, yeah. Go shake things down, make sure everything works, and hopefully get some halibut. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully fishing's good. I'm gonna kind of go drop gear in the same old spots and see what happens, I guess. Yeah, excited. <laughs> All right, so me and T are just back here banking up. Yeah, we've just got some pollock right here. And uh... Just pollock today. Yeah. We got some from our processor from the freezer, so. Got thawed out. Nice piece of chunks here. Just make some, put some in the tub. And in a little bit, I'll set up the launching cable and bazooka. Right there. So, the whole bay that probably takes about, I'd say probably an hour and a half, so it's not too bad. Pretty easy to do on the way out to the grounds. Give you some nice fresh bait without sitting around on the hooks. For anyone wondering, these are uh, 15 gauge circle hooks attached to, uh, I think, um, bull nose snaps. I'm not sure the size, the snaps or the twine. We'll put it in a little pop up, let you know. But yeah, not really much to it. Rest this bait chopped up, help Tristan start baiting them up, and uh, yeah, launch some gear. bait table set up as you just saw. It's got a table to set the bait bucket on, the tub on, and then what we call the bazooka or a shotgun. So the line goes through this line guide here and then as it's going out you just take these snaps and clip it on on the outside of the ring. You slip these baits into this slot right here. The line is going out like that, and you just snap on like that, and it just pulls it out for you. You don't have to risk your hand getting hooked or anything. It's a very safe system. Also got our catch anchor here. We use this on the starting end, and then our little navy anchors there we use on the finish end. And the reason for that is just so that it uh, hooks into the ground quick, hooks in the bottom. So, just gonna finish baiting these up. I think probably, oh, I'd say half an hour to the first set spot, so we should be pretty close to finish baiting. And then we'll start throwing some hooks out. All right, well, got some gear going out here. How's it looking, Matt? All right. Good bait. Excited. Yeah. How are you? He's 
hammering away on the rest of the baits here. So we're gonna put a little string out here and then we'll put a couple back towards town, I guess, and see what happens. Yeah, a little breeze out of the south, pretty nice though. Fingers too bad today. We'll see what happens. So we're fishing in like 70 to 50 fathoms today. Just kind of along a steep edge here and then we'll go put some over on the flats. It's kind of muddier. Um, there's some rocky patches in there too. So those will hold some fish sometimes. So yeah, just kind of weaving this line along the edge here and uh, see what happens, I guess. All right guys, we'll lay out another set here.
for our last set, motoring over the spot. So what we have here is our trailer buoys. Just a big A1 round buoy and just a regular old uh, dungy cork buoy on our butt bridle here. Just have an eye and to attach it to the ground line we have a, a sheet band with just a, <coughs> a double sheet band I guess and it just comes through this line guide here and as I was showing you earlier you just take your snaps and snap it on the outside. That actually comes after you drop the anchor. So you got your buoy attached to your ground line here you set out your scope, or not your scope, but your buoy line, which for us is anywhere from 75 fathoms to 25 fathoms, somewhere in there. Anywhere from 25 fathoms up to even 100 fathoms. Um, after you set your buoy line out, you tie your anchor on. And to tie the anchor on, we just use this knot here. Yeah, hold this. Tie the anchor on, we just use this knot here. We'll loop over, we'll loop back, kind of like a figure eight, like that. And then you wrap that loop and stick this one through. Pull your tail is tight, and it just puts a bite in the line. After that's on there, take your tail for your anchor and just do the same thing as she did. Well, it's it our funny. our first day, kind of I shaking got, the rust off, I guess. I got the jitters or something for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. So yeah. Well, hopefully there's something out here. Yeah, fingers crossed. Well, yeah, be nice to too, be nice to get a few today. At least it's not like blazing hot and sunny out. Like yesterday yeah. would have been miserable, I think. Got a nice overcast today. Yeah. A little was, bank of fog came in earlier. It's like, oh, it's going to be a foggy day then. You know, that was weird too, because I could see all the way out of Chiniac and then all of a sudden it's just on top of us. Yeah. It's like, where did that come from? Yeah, and it disappeared as quick as it showed up. Yeah. I guess it's kind of out there now a little bit. A little bit, huh? Yeah. So, um, got all prepped and ready for our next set here. And then I guess we uh, might just head into town and hang out for a bit, let our gear soak, potentially. Yeah, probably. But, I don't think we have to start pulling until like, I don't know, five? Yeah. Everything is pretty close together. Shouldn't have as much gear out as usual. Though. Yeah, it's not gonna be as much. So it'll go on a little bit quicker from the beginning. Anyways, we'll see. Maybe we'll head back out about the door or something. Yeah. So that gives us some time. Alright, well we'll bring you guys back. And uh yeah, fingers crossed. Greasy. Greasy calling. It's good bait. Definitely. Alright guys, well we're just getting ready to make this set here, uh, a couple hundred yards to go, I'll have the boys trail the gear here in a minute, throw the bird buoy out, so folks ask what the bird line is, it's to try and prevent incidental take of seabirds, uh, particularly the short tailed albatross. Um, that can shut down our longline fisheries in Alaska. If, uh, well, the threshold used to be two incidental takes per year, and that applies to all longline fisheries in Alaska sablefish, halibut, Pacific cod. So it's pretty important not to, to catch any. 
we don't have that many around here, but there's more out west. So probably like 70 fathoms is, uh, is good, 70, okay. So we're just fishing deeper right here. Um, it's primarily mud bottom, but there's a few rocky spots here. And the fish seem to kind of like those areas that transition sometimes. These fish come and go through, through this area throughout the year. You never really know what you're going to get. Uh, 70 is fine. So I usually have them just tack on like an extra 5 or 10 fathoms. Depending on how close we are to an edge too. If we're near a sharp edge, I'll put more on. Just in case the gear ends up drifting off of it. Uh, you don't want your buoys to go under and potentially lose your gear. Let her go. That alarm's just autopilot. It just goes off when the well, it's off course. So I'm just recording this in the logbook. Uh, position, depth, time, how many sets, or how many, uh, how long the set is in this case. Um, we just call them skates, but they're not a, a true skate. A, a true skate is uh, 1,800 foot or 300 fathoms. We're using uh, third skates essentially, so 600 foot, 100 fathoms. That's how long each of our shots is, so it's really easy to keep track. Um, we have a C-link at the end of every every set, so we can disconnect them from each other. And then we also have our line marked at 25 fathoms, at 50 fathoms midway, and then at, at 75 fathoms. So no matter which way you haul it from you'll have the first mark at 25, 50, and 75. Um, they do get flip-flopped on the reel, depending on which way you pull from first. And so it's nice to have those marks on there. It's particularly useful for us because we also use it as buoy line. Some other boats will take extra line and coil it up and they'll use that as their buoy line and throw that over first with their with their buoys and their, then their anchor and then hook onto their um, main line or their long line. We just put ours right on the spool. It just makes it easy for us. We don't have to worry about extra line. We don't have to pull it through the trap block or anything like that. So it's just convenient. So that's why we use marking on the line so we know uh, how much we have out so we don't short line our set and end up submerging the buoy. So I am just recording this information on my logbook. So IPHC, that's the International Pacific Halibut Commission. They do collect the data off our logbooks. So when we go to pull our set, we'll record how many halibut we caught, um, legal halibut, how many pounds, and then uh, we'll also record if we lost any gear, um, the approximate amount of hooks that you have on each set, the length of your set, so on and so forth, and then they use that to help kind of get an idea of how the, the fishery is going year to year. And it's also helpful to look back and know what you caught when. I do mark all my sets on on my computer on Noble Tech, but they're just marks. I don't actually record how much we caught. 
it does show the date, it, it shows the time, but then I can just use that and refer back to my logbook and see, oh yeah, that set was pretty good this time a year ago or whatever. Um, so yeah, so these were de decent sets last year, about two weeks earlier than we're fishing now. Just going over a little high spot right here. See it hop up. Might get a little bit rocky on the top up here. I a bit like to lay in spots like this and sometimes up on top. That transition between soft and hard bottom can be good sometimes, um, especially if there's bait fish laying on top of it. They're actually, the stocks are kind of split right now. There's fish deep and there's also fish up shallow. But uh, we usually don't really fish shallow water that much. It can be really good, but it's also rough on the gear. You get hung up a lot. Um, it's hard to maneuver and stay on top of the gear, especially if it's windy or the tide's running. Fishing in the deep mud is just easy. Yeah, another rock, please. So I just had them put a rock on each side of that hill. So a lot of times when you have a peak like this, your line will close line over the top of it. But if you put a rock on it, it'll sink down to the bottom, helps drop it down. I need to get more rocks. We're kind of short. These are actually weights off of some kind of exercise machine. Um, some kind soul went through the harbor and dropped like little bundles all over the place one year. And uh, we had a couple of friends that just gave us theirs. They didn't need them. So that was cool. Um, I think they're probably like around seven or eight pounds. Really a perfect weight, sash weight. It's also what they're referred to as uh, sash weights. Probably because guys use sash weights off of windows at one point in the past when when they were easy to come by. Uh, rocks work really good. Just take a rock and you, and you web it. Got the Coast Guard up in front of us. I'd show you, but I doubt you'd be able to see them, but they're oh, it's like about a, two miles away. They're just doing some exercises, it looks like. They got a little patrol boat and they got the chopper hovering over the top of it, probably doing some lifts. Practice rescues, that's good to see those guys out here. Greatly appreciated. So the cool thing about the Coast Guard is they're not just here for commercial fishermen or mariners or anybody else. Um, it doesn't matter who's in trouble or who needs help or assistance. They're there to provide for anybody. They go into the villages and will take people out that have a medical condition. Um, they'll assist in search and rescues for lost hunters. Any individuals that are out in the woods and get lost, they're there. Any kind of disasters, they're there. Um, international shipping, Sport fishing, recreational boaters, commercial fishermen. They're there for everybody. So they're a huge asset to our community and our nation for that matter. They also do fish reinforcement up here. So yeah, they're uh, a great group of men and women and a huge asset to our communities and our country. Very much appreciated. And that's it. So, got the gear out. Probably give it a pretty good soak here. Um, our days are so long now that we can soak them longer. Generally speaking, though, like five or six hours here always seems to be plenty. Uh, no bait comes back, so 
there's no reason to leave it in longer. If you don't have bait on the hook coming back, then yeah, you're not accomplishing anything by letting it soak longer. So we'll probably give it six, maybe seven hours and uh, that'll get it through two tides. So we kind of set just about at slack. Now it's starting to flood a little bit. Um, the ebb was pretty big, so it's probably still running a little bit right now. It'll usually can run for an hour or two longer, depending on where you're at before it actually starts to switch. Hey, what you doing down there? Oh, just chopping up some ice. Getting ready to dump some water down there. Get our slush ice going. Well, just headed out. Turned gray on us. Big fog bank out here. Yeah, sunshine's peeking through a little bit, but a lot cooler today, which is pretty nice. Yeah, hopefully we can find our gear. Picked up an extra crewman on the way. Well, crew woman. Hey guys. Glad you come join us for the afternoon. Yeah, so nice out here anyways, nice and cool. Yesterday it was sunny and hot, it would have been pretty pretty rough out on the water. Yeah, nice and cool out here. Yeah, hopefully we're not gonna run over anybody, as long as I still look. I kicked on the gen set. Okay. I mean, it's that time of year, but it was warm pretty early, too. Like, back in March. Just a little bit of fish. Hoping for a thousand pounds, so. Don't need too much water down there. Yeah. Well, I guess like 40 minutes to our spot, then we'll start hauling line. folks well not much for a view out at the office today got a little foggy on the way out so you might be asking yourself how we navigate through all this pea soup well it's actually not that bad we've seen it a lot worse but yeah visibility, visibility is probably uh, maybe 300 feet right now maybe a little bit more kind of got to keep a sharp eye out for boats and stuff but uh, we've got a radar up here that alerts us. Um, right now it's on a two mile setting, so the furthest ring would be a two mile uh, target, and each one is half mile going out. We can zoom that in or zoom it out. We usually keep the setting pretty tight because it shows small targets better. If it's out on the uh, on 16 mile, which is a limit of that radar, it's, yeah, it's pretty hard to, to see smaller targets. Um, in close, so when, when it's really foggy or at night when we're traveling, we'll drop it down to like one mile because that's plenty of time to avoid another vessel. Um, and yeah, for our gear, of course, we have GPS. So this is our Bruno, and this is what picks up the signal from the satellite and gives us our position. This changes as we're traveling. It's tied in to our time zero nav software on our computer and it's displayed up here when it's foggy like this you can't see the the buoys very far away but um, you can just travel to that mark uh, there's a latin long on these marks too so if i right click i can look at the properties that shows the latin long of the mark and then i can use that 
to go off this if I wanted, or I could just travel down here. If I lost the computer for some reason, I have the beginning and end of those sets written down in my logbook. I could look at that uh, lat long in there and then just uh, guide myself to it by using the GPS. So there's a few different ways. And these are really accurate. Um, they'll get you within probably 50 foot of that mark even closer under good conditions. It doesn't take into account like any any tide, so your buoy might be down a ways because of the tide, pulling the buoys down and making your line go at an angle so it wouldn't be exactly where you marked it necessarily. Or depending on when you mark it, when you're setting, if it drifts some, it could be a little bit further. But that gets you up right in the ballpark. And uh, so we'll just travel to that mark we don't see it right off the bat, we'll just make a couple of circles and and track it down. Um, same stuff that we use when we're fishing at night, if we have a set out after dark that we're pulling, or crab gear, or anything like that in the dark, that comes in really handy. Uh, we have a sodium that we turn on that helps light things up in front of us, and we can see where we're going and spot obstacles, targets, fishing gear, whatever. You really want to use all your senses, pay attention, listen for other vessels. All right, well, we're about to start hauling in a minute. I just gotta get this plugged in back here. This is for our throttle, um, our throttle and steering. So there's just a couple of plugs on the bottom. One's a fat cord, one's a skinny cord. I have it written down on the bottom of this, so. pretty nice and easy we take this home um, this jog stick is pretty expensive and hard to come by now too and so let's see I got a skinny cable these only go in one way so you don't have to worry about crossing your pins or anything over this is on standby right now so you just push that button and then this one has a, a little button on the back light lights up Misty day. Yes. We shall run over there and start the haul. There's Matt. He's all ready. Rep the ready. <laughs> Hopefully we get some fish. Yeah. The flat kind. Yeah. Not just any fish. It's got to be the right fish. It's just uh it's just fog, yeah. It was thick though. Thick enough that almost feels like mist that was condensing on the rigging and dripping. Yeah. You see that new pulley? Handy work? That is beautiful. Yeah, if you wanna see him making this, I suppose mom will be whipping out the video at some point. Even 
Okay, well, Squeaking. Yeah, it's nice out here. These are the controls. What we need to do is just uh, move that pulley over a little bit, maybe. So there's also an emergency shut off on the reel itself. It's just a valve. You flip it all the way, it stops it. Stops the cold, stops the dead. So everybody knows what you're doing with this other valve or this other engine. Yeah, so basically we're just going to part over to port right now. This is back to center. And uh, this is forward, and to the starboard is reverse. We also get asked a lot if we're pulling the gear to us or if we're pulling the boat to the gear. And we're pulling the boat to the gear. There's an anchor on the other end. Yeah, we're so. traveling backwards. Yep. So if possible, we try and position ourselves so we're up current or upwind of the end of the set so it pushes us down and it just you don't have to put the the boat in gear very much usually once we get the anchor up here we'll see see how it does but right now the tide is just starting to ebb and we have just a very slight wind from the east so basically the tide is going this way the wind is coming this way so we should stay pretty close down our, our line and probably won't have to bump it into gear very much. Always nice when that's the case. Yeah. The, the bad part about hauling off the stern is it is a little bit harder if, the, if it's windy or rough out. Um, most guys haul off the midships. We may switch at some point. When we first set this boat up though, we didn't have steering or uh, throttle control back here. And so this is the way that we did it. it. It'll pull the boat through about anything. It just gets wet and the line gets tight and, you know, flagged out, but it, it'll pull it along just fine. You can't do that um, pulling midships. Because you're literally pulling your boat broadside through the, the water. 
and the waves and the wind and it's not a very desirable situation at all. So even though the line is, well, not sure which way it's going yet, um, that way, I guess, we're just bumping it in, in gear so we're not going over the top of the line. We're putting it in forward. And looks anchor. like we got an anchor here. can get really, really tight. Still in so this gear has oh seven and a half hour soak. So you can see it's pretty much just skin coming back. So good soak. why they're white side up all the time and that's just kind of the old standard for fresh markets you put a white side up so it presents nicely yep doesn't let blood collect or pool in the white side still applies to the day i guess too uh -huh. even though we don't need the fresh market but oh there's a nice one shake our fish that does a little damage to their mouths like that get them back in the water immediately that's a nice one mm -hmm. Glorious or fun job, but a necessary job nonetheless. Yep. Yeah. Makes it a lot easier for baiting too, huh? Yeah, sometimes we, if we were baiting back, he'd be baiting, which is a really, really big help. But since we're just doing the day fishing today, we're just pinning the hooks. Sort out any bad ones, any dead hooks, any damaged canyons, go in a pile, we'll break them down. like it if it would have kept up it would have been pretty nasty this afternoon yeah we're allowed 20% uh, 20% by the halibut weight of bycatch for cod so if we land a thousand pounds of halibut we can keep 200 pounds of cod that's all based on round weights so just like they are now
Another comment we get a lot is how do we attach these? Well, it's simple. You just squeeze it like that, clips onto the line like that. It's actually quite secure. Easy to pop on and off. We're just pulling right on down the line here. Yeah, perfect lay, huh? Yeah, it's actually really nice. Maybe I'll just bump it into reverse for a second. One of the biggest things you gotta watch when you're hauling off the stern like this, if you get either a, a tangle with your own line, which happens, a drift snarl, or you get some line you bring up from the bottom, lost gear, lost crab line, lost long line gear. It can drift underneath and get in your wheel. So I'm always watching real close down here. If I see something like that, I'll just put it in gear and just, just blast it out of my way. That'll just blast it away from the boat and then you can safely bring it on. Well, if I saw a bunch of stuff like that, what happens if when you stop hauling, you'll drift over the top of it? Like if I if I stop the, the roller to deal with it, we just like drift right over the top of it. Just because the tension on the line is kind of like a rubber band, it just pulls you over. So you, you want to watch out for that. So what I'll do is I'll just put the boat in gear and forward and give it a little uh, a little throttle and it'll just blow that line and flag it back behind us and then we can pull up on it. Doesn't take a whole lot. We're actually just traveling right down our set really nice. This spot can be a little bit tough sometimes because uh, the current kind of runs perpendicular to the way the set is instead of parallel with it. So a big ab tide can really push you sideways and then you end up pulling against the gear. Right now it's about slack tides, just started ebbing. And a little bit of wind from the other direction is just keeping us centered right on it. It's making pulling really easy. That's beautiful, huh? Yeah. And not hot. No skate. <laughs> yeah, that green eyes. They look creepy, but kind of cool too. They look mad. Creepy and beautiful all at once. C pen, aka uh, C whip. C whip. Oh, yep. Those just root down in the mud down on the bottom. It's like a forest of them down there. 
fish like them. Cod really like them, right? Yeah, cod are always in there. Cod like those. So we're pulling kind of slow right now, but as our reel starts to fill up with line, it'll go faster and faster. These tubs, it's about 250. And on uh, on this set, about the same. Put a, a tub of gear on this one. 